going to die tonight. Hey guys, welcome to review number two. Today is one of the most heavily requested mazes at Halloween Horror Nights, and that's Evil Dead. Now this one's based on the 2013 maze, so does it hold up? Does it capture that feel of the movie? Well, let's find out. There will be spoilers in this about the movie and the maze, so if you don't want spoilers, uh, feel free to turn off the video. Uh, so let's continue for Evil Dead, Book of the Dead. Now. Was this maze really good? I have to say yes. This is one of my favorites, I think, because simply because there were so many elements going on. There was a lot of details. Detail is what captures me, uh, not necessarily the scares. I mean, the scares are great. They work for the maze itself, but it's the detail. And Universal is better than, at that than any other haunted attraction. They, they nail the look of the film in such small spaces. It's impressive. And with Evil Dead, that's that's really hard because the film takes place in the woods and the cabin, so you've got to combine those two elements. So there's a lot to work with here, um, and it's difficult to kind of uh, put in such a small space. But they did it. Um, the facade, the front of the maze, uh, nothing special um, as it's ent you're entering the woods, so uh, it's not too elaborate, it's just trees in the front. Um, but as you go through, you start to hit the woods, and the first scene you hit is the tree, the infamous tree rape scene. The tree rape scene in this one is a lot better than Orlando's. However, Orlando does use a live actor, but from what I've seen, uh, it's it's her pretending to grab onto branches and kind of shaking back and forth. Whereas this is this is a full-on puppet that's attached to the wall and it's shaking and it's actually got the roots all entangled on her. It, it looks so much better, uh, I have to admit, on this one. Um, and then you've got a, a statue of Evil Mere steering. It's not uh, it's not scary, but it's striking to look at. It, the detail they put on the statue is really, really good. Uh, you move through vines, uh, giving the feeling of going through the same scene Mia is going through, and then you're attacked by Mia. And so this really, this scare actually it depends on where you are. Uh, if you just miss it, it's not that scary. It's just more of a walkthrough, but you got a ton of stuff that's in your face. Um, but if you hit it at the right spot, Mia gets you really well. Um, so I have to mention. And I think we'll start with the scare actors. The scare actors in this maze are fast, they're furious, they're, they're just so... Oh, there's a universal pun right there. Um, <laughs> the, the, the scare actors, though, they're very aggressive. Uh, they're not zombies, so they move very fast, and they work really well to the, to the timing of the sound effects. Uh, the music just drives on the scares, and it, it's great. The look of each scare actor. Let's start with Mia. Mia herself, uh, in either incarnations, are great. Um, they nailed the look, uh, the basic dress with the blood down it, but there's the makeup effects, and this is why Boneyard effects are really good at their job at Horror Nights, is they get the detail down. And for Mia, they got the scarring, they got the lenses right, it just looks fantastic. Um, if you love the movie, you love the look of these characters because it's like being there. Um, that's something I should mention real quick. But the maze, uh, just like El Kikui, is very immersive. It, it puts you in that set. Uh, it never lets up. Um, moving on, we have Eric. Eric, uh, <laughs> Eric looks great because the first time you see him, uh, technically he's not a scare actor. He's uh, he's actually reading the book that summons Evil Mia to do a scare for you, and it's great. But he, the, the actual scare actor himself, he appears in the, bat, the the infamous bathroom scene. And he's there holding, uh, I believe, it's uh, a needle on his eye. And he goes for it. It's not too scary, but it's, it's a distraction scare for what's coming up. Because the next person you have is Olivia. Olivia, if you've seen the film, has the... The, the ripped off half face. She comes out with a, a piece of glass and it looks great. Uh, depending on when you hit it, 
Uh, it's there in your face, behind the curtain. Uh, it's great. It's um, it's a great scare. And the look, the make, again, the, I can't express how well the makeup looks on the Evil Dead actors. They're, it's just, there's nothing, uh, there's no par to it. Uh, it just looks fantastic. Um, and then we, of course, have David. David appears, I believe, only once uh, in the maze, uh, if I recall for it. He comes out with a shovel. Um, Mia then appears with a uh, switchblade doing the famous tongue, uh, fork tongue cut, and that looks great. Um, then we have, uh, then we get into the darker stuff. Um, we have evil, evil Eric, um, and evil Mia, and I believe the Abomination does appear, uh, if I remember correctly. And all this combines, yes, the Abomination does appear, sorry. The Abomination comes out with your machete, and this works really well. This is one of the best scares of the maze. Uh, because usually with a blinder, you have those uh, hangers down, so you have the the um, uh, what are they called? The, the, the blinders, essentially. So as you walk through them, you go into the next room. However, they've set up a scare actor room to the uh, to the left of people coming in, and it's right there. Usually there's a gap between these scares, but there isn't. It's just right there. So I actually almost walked into the uh, abomination once, and she comes out, and it, it's a great scare. And then all of a sudden, Mia, uh, innocent Mia, comes out with a chainsaw, and it's a double hit right there, and it, it, it it's just so effective. It, it really works well. This is one of the scares that works really well this year at Halloween Horror Nights. Um, and then you move into the last scene with Innocent Mia versus the Abomination. Now, this scene, if you remember the film, this is where Mia's doing the final confrontation. She has the chainsaw. She's revving it into the Abomination. And the Abomination, this is a water effect. So as she's revving it, water is spurting out from the Abomination. And that's the conclusion. So all the scare actors, overall, they work really well. There's occasional lapses on, on scares uh, for earlier on, um, but once you get down into the basement, that's when things hit you fast and furious uh, a lot more than earlier on in the maze, and this works really well. It's almost like the movie where things start out slow and then they start to pick up, and the maze gets this. The maze understands this kind of uh, development and John did a great job of placing the actors in the maze because they hit you in the right spots um, they get you really well um, the maze itself let's talk about the design wise design wise it's fantastic if you're a fan of the film you're gonna notice so much detail for example they actually uh, I believe they got uh, from the art director, they got all the pages from the Book of the Dead. So the Book of the Dead is a complete book. Uh, as you're walking by, Eric, uh, you can look at it, and it looks great. Uh, the cabin itself is one of the highlights. The inside of the, the, the front room of the cabin, it's bomb. Uh, the the trap door is there. But here's the cool thing with the, the first part of the cabin, is that the walls disappear, and you actually see like demons in uh, in the walls and it, it just looks great uh, it's definitely uh, something startling if you're not expecting it it's it's definitely something that will get you if you're not if you're walking by um, so it looks great uh, the, the the bathroom scene looks fantastic they replicated that down to a T um, one cool thing I missed the first time and this is again why I was glad I went the second time is in the, the bathroom mirror, you actually see a scare actor's face. It's Olivia, and it's demonic Olivia as she's uh, staring at you. You don't expect it. And this was, it wasn't really scary, but it was effective. And it, just her glaring at you, and you're not expecting it. And it's a really cool gag, because as you've seen, if you've seen the movie, you know that Olivia looks into the mirror, and, you, and she sees the demonic version of herself. Uh, so this is really good. So it's just details like this that make the maze uh, fant a fantastic experience for any Evil Dead fan, or even a casual fan. Um, as you move down into the basement, um, uh, sorry, you move into the living room again, and everything's messed up. Uh, 
things are overturned. But this is really cool because they have the trap door finally open. So you have evil Mia uh, staring at you, and then you have another Mia coming right in front of you. So as you're looking down, Mia comes at you. And this is a great double take uh, gag, and it, it just works so well. Uh, it got me a couple of times uh, going through the maze. Um, as you move into the basement, uh, they've replicated everything, the table with the shotgun shells, um, and Mia's doing her infamous uh, tongue slicing scene. Um, and then you move further in, and you have cats, the hanging cats from the film are in there, uh, smacking you, and it's disturbing. I've been through many mazes where they've had hanging gags. Uh, Walking Dead is one, and we'll get to that review uh, later, but... Uh, one thing I have to tell you that with that one with pigs and entrails, but this one actually had cats, and this was disturbing because there was fur on it, and it, it was one of the most disturbing things. Of all my years going to Horror Nights, I, I think this is one of the most disturbing uh, hanging gags that Horror Nights has ever done. It was it was just freaky going through the cats. Um, and my friend who's a cat uh, lover absolutely hated it, which was pretty funny. Um... This was part of the attraction, but it, it's, uh, it wasn't this character. Uh, they actually had a little pool of water, similar to how they did La La Rana uh, the previous two years, uh, where they had a, a little bit of a water pool. Uh, but this is really cool because they had a animatronic Mia come out uh, from the darkness and kind of glide over the water. And uh, this this is another one that where it will either get you or it won't. But either way, it was cool to look at, um, and I enjoyed uh, seeing this because it was one of my favorite scenes from the film, and it definitely got me in the film. So looking at it in the maze, it was really a cool effect. Um, and then you reach the shed, uh, the famous uh, fight between Mia and the Abomination, and then the conclusion, which I described uh, with Mia chainsawing. Uh, the water effects in this maze... Uh, great. Um, going back to near the beginning of the cabin, uh, if you've seen the film, or even the trailer, uh, Olivia's throwing up on on, uh, uh, sorry, Mia is throwing up on Olivia, and they actually did that in the maze with a scare actor who's laying down, and uh, a puppet that is uh, just lurching over, but then the head tilts and shoots water or vomit at, at the uh, passers-by, it's great. Um, it caught me a couple of times because it's so unexpected. Uh, I kind of knew they would do a gag like that, but I didn't know how they were going to do it, and it worked great. The the head is really fast, so it's able to get get guess really quickly as they're walking by. Um, and for those who don't know, uh, who don't know much about Evil Dead, it was definitely effective. We uh, on the second time going, we had a couple going through, and I I, I believe they before we were talking about it, they'd never seen Evil Dead, and it got them very, <laughs> it got them great. So that was one of my favorite scenes in the maze. Um, and of course you have the turkey cutter scene. Um, they had, um, they had the, the famous cutting off the arm scene uh, that would spray, uh, spray a bit of water at the guests as they went by. And, uh, and then the final scene with the abomination actually it wasn't just sprinkles. And here's the thing. Um, this was kind of a double water effect because they had a little sprinkler system on the top. It was more mist than it was actual water because they can't really drench the guests for obvious reasons. But the um, the chain the chainsaw going into the abomination actually did a, a, a stream. It wasn't just, like, spray. It was an actual stream. So um, a lot of us got wet in that scene. So the maze was fantastic. Um, definitely one of the highlights of this year, and definitely one... I, I don't think they would bring it back. Uh, I know they're doing Evil Dead 2, uh, and then they're doing a future collaboration with uh, Ash and Mia. But um, definitely definitely a great maze. Like Insidious, it, it's definitely a great one-off maze. Uh, one that I'm glad I got to experience, because loving the Evil Dead franchise, and then loving the new 2013 film. It was a fantastic experience as a fan. It was both enjoyable as a non-fan. And overall, it was very effective in some of its scares. 
So what would I rate Evil Dead? Uh, it's definitely high up there. Um, I would definitely give it a 9 out of 10. Um, however, that's not to say there are no flaws in this maze. Uh, a few of the scares do uh, do fall through, but that's early on. Once you get into the cabin, that's when things escalate. And But the amount of detail and uh, the designs um, of the characters and the cabin and the basement, it, this all accumulates into a fun attraction to walk through. Uh, I've been through attractions before where it just wasn't that interesting, but Evil Dead definitely pulls it. So this one gets a 9 out of 10. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the review, and uh, next review will be Insidious Into the Further, one of my favorites, and I can't wait to review it for you guys, and uh, hope to see you guys there.